YouTube, what the Rome 2 crap is going on? Air of Carthage here, bringing you some Armenia versus RDA action. So it should be pretty fun. I know it's been a long time since I got you a non-Warhammer video. And, well, it's partly because Warhammer is just simply more popular right now, but also it doesn't mean that I'm never going to show other stuff again, because I will. I'm actually super excited to see what the next historical title is. Uh, some part of me kind of feels like that it's probably going to be like maybe a China thing because they, they're making it sound like it's going to be in a time period that they ha or a, maybe they didn't say a time period as much as I think a, it sounded like it was a theater that they haven't visited before. I think there's a couple of options it could be, but my bet's on the China thing. I don't know. What do you all think? What do you think? So over here we've got some um, armored horse archers from the, uh, I believe this is Armenia. I could be wrong. But um, we've got a couple of hillmen on either flank up front. And then in the back line, it's going to be axemen and Persian hoplites. And then uh, four Persian cavalry in the back with one Azad knight. How cool is that? You rarely see an Azad knight. Very, very tanky unit. You just don't see them very often because a lot of these factions can field shock cavalry that a lot of people prefer. Uh, but this is a melee cavalry, so very high defense, very high armor. But <clears throat> in the uh, Rome 2 age of javelin heavy armies typically don't see these guys because they're harder to pay off very big melee attack very big melee attack all right so the armored horse archers are going to try and give um, some grief to the rda here on the flank they better stay well clear of these illyrian thuros uh, thurio spears which they will but all these illyrian units um tend to be pretty well armored and very well shielded so horse archers are going to have their work cut out for them these mercenary Tarantine cavalry can catch, probably, the armored horse archers or get quite close to it. Let's see whether or not the micromanagement holds here and they stay away from these Thurio spears. They are, for the time being, and they're doing nice damage. They may have heavy shot on, they do. So the uh, armored horse archers using heavy shot at close range in order to maximize their damage. In terms of the RDA infantry, we have Illyrian hoplites up front, backed up by Illyrian Thurios. And then there's a couple of noble hoplites. Looks like three of those in a second line. And then there's some Illyrian marines. I love the Illyrian marines. Such a cool unit. One of my favorite units that the RDA can field. And then there's a couple of Illyrian cav being supported by three mercenary Tarantine cavalry. And then I like the flank here with the armored hoplites, the anti-cavalry units, protecting the uh, Illyrian Thurio spears, which are javelin units. Look at the um, Armenian player creating a huge gap here in the center. Kind of splitting his army into wings. Let's see how that works out. He's got one wing now putting a lot of pressure over here. Let's see how it works out. Persian cavalry going to try and break the front lines. A last second hoplite wall here, hoplite wall. And then look at this. The armored horse archer is going to get in a quick rear charge. Thurio spears going into square. Per Persian cavalry basically breaking through the Illyrian Hoplites, causing a waiver. If they can get them to rout with like a rear charge penalty, which they've already inflicted, the follow-up from the infantry here may be devastating. We'll see. If this unit routes, it's going to be a big deal for the RDA, who are taking an engagement in the center just against some hillmen. The hillmen are obviously fodder units here, and there's some noble horse archers that I missed earlier that are doing some really good work here in the center against the cavalry. The Illyrian cavalry is suffering heavily there, and that Hoplite unit did indeed get broken. And now another unit potentially could suffer the same fate, but this one's a noble, so it most likely will not suffer such a fate, at least not as easily. Let's watch this flank. So the hillman being used as a delay tactic, basically. We've now got Tarantine cavalry supporting over here, just showering javelins into the axemen, and it's working quite well. The hillman here engaged with the Illyrian Thurio spears in the square. And then same thing here, Illyrian Marines, not in a square formation, but the Illyrian Marines holding out against the Hillmen. The Persian Cavalry looks to be searching for a next target, and we are going to get an engagement over here. A little bit of mismicro on the Persian Cavalry, but the infantry is coming forward. The Persian Cavalry is going to come back, but it gets attacked by the Illyrian Cavalry, which is actually, okay, medium melee cavalry, yeah. I was thinking it was heavy for a minute. I can't remember which unit it is, but one faction has really cheap heavy cavalry. Look at this. The Tarantine cavalry, not on skirmish, gets caught by the Persian cavalry. But there's Illyrian Thurio spears around. And now they're going to flee away. And this Persian cavalry is going to take a javelin day wallop here. 
this heavy shot cavalry just being showered with javelins from all directions. It is going to be bad news for him indeed. And look, now there's another unit here too of Illyrian Thurio Spears. But now they're going to be shot in the back by the uh, the armored horse archers. Over here, the hillmen and other units continuing to try and fight the Illyrian nobles. Not a fight they're likely to win in the end, but they're at least causing the distraction. This very damaged unit of uh, Persian cavalry is going to charge back here. There are a couple of mercenary peltists I missed earlier. Trying to inflict a rear charge penalty here. Uh, maybe get rid of these guys, but it's not going to do enough to the uh, nobles. Their leadership will be too strong. But might as well just use that unit for what you can because it was going to die regardless. These two noble horse archers, let's take a look, 32 kills. Noble horse archers are very, very good in the late game because they're very, I believe they're very heavy, yeah, very heavy missile cavalry. So their mass allows them to do a lot of damage to already damaged infantry in a late game scenario. Plus they can usually unload their ammo at close ranges. These guys are trying to get into a square and cavalry counter tactics at the last second. These noble horse archers need to get out of here post haste. The cavalry counter tactics can cause you a lot of damage. But the Illyrian Thurio Spears took a pretty sound flogging. This noble horse archer had 119 kills, so it's gotten some work done. So over here, some uh, regrouped hillmen. I don't know if maybe this is a bug in the replay or he just hasn't noticed these guys yet. There's some Illyrian Marines moving to the flank. And it looks like the, uh, the RDA infantry has broken here. Yeah, there could be a bit of a bug out going on in the... Um, in the replay, it's possible with this situation being a little bit funny, but maybe not because there's actual attack orders here and these guys are going into a square. The Azet Knights now coming in and then the Noble Horse Archers coming in afterwards for charges. Look at the kills here, 157 kills and climbing. These guys have really solid melee attack at 41. And they're going to cause extensive damage. And this is a great move right here. Keep these guys distracted from throwing javelins into this other fight. So, nice use. Just get a quick charge and then get out. Noble Horse Archer still tearing down this uh, Ar uh, Mercenary Tarantine Cavalry. 163 kills. Wow. So it's going to come down to the, the healthier infantry of the RDA is going to survive to the late game against the heavier cavalry of the Armenians. This is not a huge surprise, this type of thing we see before. It's like the Armored Horse Archers coming into the Mercenary Peltist. And then immediately charging out because there's Illyrian nobles there to support. Look at this, firing right into the back of these infantry. Axemen do good armor piercing damage, they just don't have the survivability to really stand up against these heavy hoplites. And remember that Illyrian hoplites and noble hoplites have really high armor. So. Look at this, nice charge into the mercenary peltist here with the armored horse archers again. Very good flank charge. Yep, those guys are starting to drop. 110 kills for the armored horse archers. And the Ozet Knights, 39 kills, still very, very healthy. That's a lot of mass to be thrown around in the late game. So if, if the Armenians can kind of single out RDA units, they have a pretty good chance of finding victory here, I think. These Axemen have these uh, Illyrian Marines surrounded. But the Illyrian Marines might be able to outlast them. There's a regrouped Persian Hoplite here, which, again, could be a replay bug. Or he's forgotten it, one of the two. We'll see if it starts to move. Look at this, just showering these Hoplites as they reform. 100 kills on that Noble Horse Archer now, and 168 on the other. So the Noble Horse Archer is just absolutely wreaking havoc. These um, hapotes from the front are going to be pretty tough to hit. Horse archers may want to try and get to the rear here. Look at this. Illyrian hapote being crunched by the noble horse archer. Yeah, these um, marines are going to hold out quite nicely over here. They've got 119 kills. Semper Fi, Illyrian marines. Semper Fi. Check it out. Get some... Uh, Sweet action here, the three group Persian Hapotes taking on some, uh, I think, Illyrian Thurio Spears. Yep. And then the Horse Archers just constantly charging from behind as they get opportunities, and <coughs> they are getting some serious damage done. Look, that one now up to 147 kills. <coughs> He's got over 300 kills with his Noble 
uh, horse archers at this point. Very nice play. This is a fairly close battle. I mean, there's a lot of cavalry left. And so I would think the Armenians have some advantage, but there's a lot of very tough infantry left for the RDA as well. And it is good against cavalry, if it can get the cavalry to sit still. There's a cavalry counter tactics here on the Illyrian Thurio Spears too. It looks like some of the um, Illyrian units trying to regroup in this small patch of forest here. These guys are either, again, could be a replay glitch, could just be forgotten about. I would think maybe a replay glitch this late in the battle. Nope. Just temporarily not microed. All right, here comes the uh, Persian heavy uh, noble archers and the armored horse archers, which again, in late game, these guys can be dangerous. 235 kills and climbing. Noble Hapotes, though, is going to be like charging into a bronze wall. <laughs> They're going to be hard to take out. Oh, look at the javelins here, just showering the Ozet Knights. These guys were pretty healthy, and they are going to feel that. They are going to feel that indeed. The Ozet Knights being held back towards the end here, I think, is a great use for them. And then look at the uh, noble horse archers just using their, throwing their weight around, literally. Charging in, getting kills cycling out they are getting a lot of kills and this armored horse archer managed to mop up a unit in the back the power bar is starting to shift back towards the Armenians now after these repeated charges the RDA just having a hard time fighting against this because they're being charged from all sides I like that they went into the forest here they're trying to form up a coherent defensive line but as they reform, they're being constantly harried by the forces of the Armenians. And look at this, the Ozit Knights just taking their sweet time holding out. These guys could dismount, actually. I don't know if it would be smart, but they could dismount and fight. I know their stats come down a little bit if they dismount, but I think they could be used just as well while they're mounted. There were times when it was actually smart to dismount your cavalry. Not as much in Rome 2, but like in Shogun 2 every now and then you could dismount Katana cavalry to pretty good effect in the right scenario if someone was spearboxing. Look at this. Power bar still shifting. And uh, the Ozit Knights now up to 92 kills. 242 there and 182 on the Armored Horse Archers. 275 on the Noble Horse Archers. I don't think the RDA can successfully defend this position. They've now taken so many losses due to repeated charges. At some point, their leadership's going to give way. Look at the Ozit Knights just kind of sitting back, awaiting their turn to join the carnage. This game really does look good. And despite all of its early release problems, Rome 2 was extremely fun in its latest patches. It was quite good. I actually like Rome 2 in its current state far better than Attila. And despite the extra campaign mechanics and stuff that Attila brought in, which I didn't even like the campaign mechanics the way that, the way that, I mean the disease and stuff was kind of cool, but um, the climate change, the way it was implemented into the Attila campaign was just absolutely stupid in my opinion. It was just put there to try and make it artificially harder for the player rather than actually feeling like it was some type of historical event. Because you had like North Africa. Like, I, it's just, it was weird. Like, North Africa would be affected the same way that Scandinavia was by. Uh, it's just, it was odd the way the climate thing worked. It was fortunately able to be modded, which made the campaigns a lot more fun. I am excited to see, though, there's some content coming up before the next historical Total War title releases. It looked like some kind of Germanic something, so part of me wonders whether or not they would go to Attila for such a thing, or whether they would actually come all the way back to Rome 2. I'll tell you what would have been cool in Rome 2, in my opinion, an Alexander campaign would have been a really cool way to go, but I'm guessing they probably won't because they did that whole Greek um, mini campaign that they added in. Fun battle, by the way, thanks to... Uh, Monstro and 
uh, SH the Lord here. <laughs> I can't see his whole name. But uh, fun game between these two guys. Thank you for sending it in. If you have more, feel free. I'll be able to get to these replays from time to time, but two fun factions. Armenia here, though, with that cavalry just absolutely deadly in the end. But, I mean, that, that armored infantry for the RDA trying to hold out to the end, I definitely like the build that the RDA put together. It has a lot of merit against a cavalry heavy, for, uh, cavalry heavy force. Uh, but in this case, Armenia was just able to succeed. And those noble horse archers, though, how about that performance? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, appreciate MSI sponsoring the channel. Appreciate you, my awesome viewers, for being here. If you want to see more, make sure to click the logo in the bottom right-hand corner. And you can subscribe, be the first to know about new videos. I will see you next time in Total War Rome 2.